We're live. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our monthly tax planning webinar. I'm Jamal Khan. I'm a senior tax partner at Churchill Tax, and I've got uh, our tax director, Hazel Johnson. Hazel is a tax barrister and uh, very knowledgeable on tax matters, very technical. I'm a chartered tax advisor and a fellow chartered certified accountant. Um, we Today's session is going to cover stamp duty on property acquisitions and the new reliefs that are available. Very, very important for landlords uh, who are looking to incorporate or who are looking to transfer their properties into limited companies. There are some very good reliefs available which Hazel will cover in today's session. Hazel, would you like to make a start? Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so this is um, our monthly seminar on tax saving tips. Um, and about Churchill Tax Advisors, we're a specialist tax advisory firm based in London and Essex, and we offer national coverage. We specialise in tax, including income, business and inheritance tax planning, tax investigations, dispute resolution and tax tribunals. We do Code of Practice 9, Code of Practice 8 and uh, Proceeds of Chrome Act investigations, VAT and stamp duty planning, Capital Gains Tax Planning, UK and uh, Offshore Trusts and Tax Planning and Disclosure of Undeclared Income. We provide specialist tax advice to accounting and law firms in relation to their clients on areas where they do not have the relevant expertise. So what, um, as Jamal said, what I'm going to talk about today is stamp duty land tax, as it's currently a, an area of great interest to people. And we're having a lot of um, inquiries, particularly as a result of the declared stamp duty uh, land tax holiday that goes on until March. So what I'm going to talk about is the stamp duty land tax holiday, the 3% surcharge, um, issues to do with incorporation, multiple dwellings relief, and also the commercial rates that can apply to um, acquisitions. So broadly on stamp duty land tax, there are two regimes. There's the residential and the non-residential or commercial rates. Residential um, is still um, taxed uh, at higher rates than uh, commercial and we currently have a stamp duty land tax holiday that applies until the 31st of March 2021 um, and under this stamp duty land tax holiday you'll pay 0% on acquisitions of property up to half a million pounds and then you're paying the usual rates after that so that's 5% up to 925, 10% up to 1.5 million and 12% after that. And when I say, you know, 10% up to one and a half million, uh, we no longer playing on a sort of a slab tax basis where you used to pay 10% on the whole of 1.5 million. We're now playing stamp duty land tax on a band basis. So your first uh, £500,000 is always going to be tax free. And then it's the difference between, say, 500000 and 925000 that's taxed at 5%. Under the old regime, of course, all of it would have been taxed at 5%. So when we're talking about the um, stamp duty land tax holiday, which is, is very welcome, um, we must also not forget about the 3% surcharge that applies to acquisitions of additional properties. So if you're not replacing your main residence, that is selling it and buying another one, then the 3% additional rate will apply to the transaction. And that applies even if it's a transaction that's otherwise covered by your stamp duty land tax holiday. And it also applies to company purchases of residential property if it's going to be let out. 
if the property is not going to be let out and you're choosing to buy a, a property through a company not for a property rental business, there are punitive 15% rates that apply and obviously nobody is um, going to be doing that. So um, if you're looking at uh, buying a £500,000 house, the 3% additional rate will give you a stamp duty land tax charge of £15,000. What should also be borne in mind is if there's an overlap in the period of ownership between your main residence and your new acquisition and you um, dispose of your first main residence within a three-year window, then you can reclaim the stamp duty land tax that you've already paid, your 3% your surcharge. And you have to do that within three months of the sale or 12 months of filing your stamp duty land tax return, whichever is um, the later. So um, although you've had the uh, cost, uh, the, the, the cash flow issue of paying that 3%, you can at least claim it back if, you've, if you manage to make the sale within your three-year three, three year window. Um, when we look at incorporation, so, so stamp duty land tax is generally charged on consideration. And consideration can mean sort of a purchase price or it can mean taking on responsibility for a mortgage. But in the case of an incorporation, different rules will apply so that um, you pay stamp duty land tax on the market value of the property that's incorporated rather than um, any price paid or the mortgage taken on, provided this is your personal company rather than um, an unconnected company. And the 3% surcharge will also apply in these circumstances. Um, there are reliefs that apply when you incorporate a partnership so that none of these um, stamp duty land tax charges apply. But there is also um, anti-avoidance legislation that applies when, when, when this occurs. So that if you've just formed a partnership and you've uh, been running it for a short period of time and then you look to incorporate to take advantage of this relief, then the relief can be disapplied. So that's something to be cautious of when um, looking to incorporate the property rental business that you've been running as a partnership. There are also um, a couple of other reliefs that can apply, particularly when we're looking at sort of bulk purchases of um, property rental um, assets. So when we're looking at multiple dwellings relief, and this applies to um, residential properties, if you're acquiring more than one dwelling or you're acquiring dwellings in linked transactions, so you know you have the same seller and the same purchaser, what you can do is pay stamp duty land tax on the average consideration. So what you would do is you would take the properties um, and you would essentially add up their value, divide them by the number of properties, calculate the stamp duty land tax that's due on the average, and then multiply it by the number of properties you have. So if you have one property that's very expensive, and say nine other ones that are relatively cheap, you can effectively reduce the stamp duty land tax you're paying on that one expensive property. And there is a minimum charge of 1% if the effect of doing these that doing that calculation is to reduce stamp duty land tax to nil. Again, it has to be borne in mind that the 3% surcharge can still apply um, if it's not your main residence. And obviously, in the case of a multiple dwellings relief claim, then we are very definitely talking about acquiring properties in the uh, not to replace your your main residence, but as a sort of a commercial arrangement. The other consideration is uh, commercial rates. So commercial rates apply where you are um, acquiring something that isn't a dwelling. You can also um, 
these rates also apply where it's not suitable to be lived in as a dwelling. So if you've got something that's in the process of being developed um, and is um, unfit for human habitation, but it's also extended to situations where you are purchasing six or more dwellings. So those can be residential properties, but as long as you are buying more than six of them, then you can claim the commercial rates and there are no, and the 3% surcharge does not apply in these circumstances. And these rates um, that apply are different to the normal residential rates and the different rates apply. Um, so you, you have 0% up to 150,000 pounds, 2% from 100, on the next 100,000 pounds worth of value and then 5% on any excess over that 250,000. So the question is, which of these reliefs are going to give you the best result in any circ in which in your circumstances? Now, currently, multiple multiple dwellings relief is going to give you a better result than a commercial commercial rates in most circumstances because the stamp duty holiday applies. So if you have if you're dealing with properties under five hundred thousand pounds you're paying 3% on a transaction. Whereas if you had multiple dwellings relief and you're talking about um, an average consideration of 500,000 pounds, then you're going to be paying um, 5% or thereabouts on that transaction. This could change back after the stamp duty land tax holiday ends. And it should be borne in mind that there are, it's anticipated that they're going to introduce an even bigger surcharge for people who are not resident in the UK acquiring property after the stamp duty land tax holiday. So they're all going to be paying an extra percent of um, stamp duty land tax. But what this um, makes clear is that you should always check the numbers and details of the transactions to see which of the three potential regimes could apply to your transaction because and less and until you do that you don't know whether um, it is better to claim normal stamp duty or to pay normal stamp duty to pay multiple dwellings relief or to be paying commercial rates and of course that doesn't preclude the fact that you may not have a choice because if you have um, property that's mixed use if it's got um, if we were talking about flats with a shop underneath it or um, a house that has got um, land that is being used, say, for agricultural purposes, then it may be that only the commercial rates are available to you and none, not the residential rates. So... Um, in summary, the stamp duty land tax holiday is a valuable relief at the moment, but it must be borne in mind that property investors are still going to be paying the 3% surcharge and you are not going to be able to go and acquire properties up to half a million pounds with no stamp duty land tax. It's only people who are buying a main residence very, very broadly who are going to be in that position. If you have bought a replacement main residence within three years, then you should consider making a repayment claim of that 3% surcharge. Um, so um, if, if you've paid your 3% surcharge and you have now um, decided that you're going to occupy something you've purchased as a main residence, it may be that that 3% surcharge, surcharge can be reclaimed, provided you're within the time limits. Um, that's just um, a slide with our details on. Um, as we say, Jamal is um, a tax expert with 24 years of experience and uh, I'm a tax barrister and a lawyer with slightly more tax experience. And um, those are my contact details so that you can reach us if you have any queries. I'll stop sharing my screen now and we'll see if anybody has any questions. Great. 
Thank you, Angel. That's very, very informative and uh, uh, concise details. Uh, I think hopefully users will, 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 will find this very useful, uh, or the audience will find this very useful. Uh, one, one point, I mean, we've got a couple of um, uh, questions here. But one point I would like to also make is that at, at present we are uh, able to get refunds for um, for clients where they have paid an additional three percent on surcharge on a property. They've acquired the property in the last few years, last two three years, and they have um, paid the additional three percent uh, surcharge. Now, to qualify for the refund, I mean, we, there's quite a lot of process that we have to follow through the HMRC. Case. It takes a long time, it's a process, but the underlying criteria is that if you've had to do any major refurbishment or re refurbishment work to a property, um, uh, when you acquired it and you paid the additional 3%, uh, the additional 3% could be 20,000, we were just making uh, 30,000, 40,000, depending on the value of the property. Uh, we can potentially get that money money refunded for you. Uh, we are applying for £120,000 of refund for a client that bought an expensive property recently. Um, and uh, uh, and that would be a substantial amount. So if, if that's something that you, 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 you would like us to consider, uh, get in contact with Hazel. Uh, her, you've seen her email. Or can you get in contact with me? And uh, we can discuss your specific circumstances and whether you're eligible, and how long the process takes for you to get a full refund. I mean, not, I'm not talking about the full stem duty, but we're just talking about the the the, the three percent, the additional three percent that you paid on that property. A um, few questions, Hazel. Uh, there's a question: If you are buying a property with someone else who also owns a property. Uh, so a three percent surcharge is applicable. Does the overlap period of three years to claim stamp duty still uh, apply if both properties are owned previously or sold? Owned previously or sold? That's an interesting question, which is normally a sign that somebody's about to say um, it's all a bit complicated. So, if you're buying a property with someone else you would both have to pay the 3% uh, charge because um, the higher rates apply if one of you has to pay the higher rates. But yes, the overlap period of three years to claim stamp duty would still apply. Um, you may be in a position where, so, so if two of you are buying a property, but only one of you had a previous main residence, you would still both have to pay the 3% surcharge. So then the three year um, overlap period is going to refer to the person who has what the main residence. If both of you are having to pay um, main, if both of you have previous main residences, then I think that this would be able to re you would have to reclaim your three percent if both of you have sold your previous um, main residences. Because, as I say, if one of you um, has to pay the three percent surcharge, then both of you have to pay the three percent surcharge in most circumstances. So, yes, it would follow through from that that both of you have got to sell your existing um, main residences and within the three year period. Um, also, I noticed that somebody's asked if you get a copy of the recording. Um, and the answer to that is yes. If, if you have registered for this webinar, you will receive an email tomorrow morning once our system processes it. You should be looking out for an email tomorrow morning with a recording. And uh, we will be sending this 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 by email and, and, and social media as well. Hazel, do you want to cover the next question? If a property is gifted, can any reliefs be claimed? So generally speaking, stamp duty land tax isn't payable on a gift because stamp duty land tax applies where um, consideration is paid. 
So if you give a, a house to someone, then there should be no stamp duty land tax. However, if the person you're making the gift to takes on responsibility for the mortgage, then at that point, they're giving you some consideration for the transfer and the the stamp duty land tax will be payable on the value of the mortgage, not on the value of the property. Assuming that we're talking about transfers between people and not to companies, because obviously a gift to a company um, is generally going to come within the um, the rules I talked about where the market value of the property is treated as the consideration and you get your 3% surcharge. But very broadly, gifts are not subject to stamp duty land tax. Then we've got a question. What about the other side of the coin, namely selling existing owned properties? If you're selling properties, then you've got nothing to... You've got stamp duty is not your responsibility. It's the buyer that pays the stamp duty, not the selling. Unless you are looking at incorporating and putting your transferring your properties into a limited company, then there are certain set of rules that apply, which Hazel is briefly covered. Um, but uh, generally, you would be looking at uh, paying stamp duty for putting it to a limited company. And, and we can, um, as Hazel did the analysis, you can look at multiple dwellings relief, or you can do the commercial. With multiple dwellings, you can pass the, for, for until March 2021, you don't have to pay the, the, the stamp duty of his properties up to 500,000, but you've still got to pay the 300%, the 3% surcharge. Um, and uh, otherwise, the, 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 the sellers don't, do not worry about the, the stamp duty. Right. Um, there's another question from the same gentleman. What are these? Hazel, do you understand the question? Um, no. Well, maybe if you can clarify, we will try and uh, ask, address your question as much as we can. Uh, the next uh, question is, can, to claim the 3%, do I need to have sold the previous house as I have not? If yes. that would, yes, you need, you need to be sell, sell, sell the house, that, and that, uh, which, is, which is your main residence. Um, and if you're outside of the three year period, um, no, I don't think you do have a case. I mean, I think I think the rules on that are very um, clear. Okay. Uh, well, be, I, I would say it might be worth um, having a conversation with someone because um, there may be a difference between you know when you exchange contracts and when you, when you're completed, and that may affect whether you're actually within or without the three year period. If we're talking about something just outside the three year window, if it's four years or five years, then no. Um, and somebody then goes on to say, if I understand this correctly, you're saying if my mother wanted to gift her house to both me and my brother, there would be no stamp duty. That's right. Um, assuming, as I say, you're not taking on responsibility for a mortgage, there would be no stamp duty land tax. However, there would potentially be capital gains tax. Um, unless the house she's gifting to you is um, her main residence. If it's not, then you, you'd have to look at the capital gains tax position. And there would be an inheritance uh, tax exposure because if she died within seven years of making that gift, then there could be um, uh, inheritance, inheritance tax due on the value of the gift, depending on the value of the gift and the size of her estate at the time of death. But stamp duty land tax, you would be right. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very good point, uh, Hazel. And, and uh, the, the, a lot of people just, there are so many different uh, taxes that can apply in any situation. So uh, the question that Johnny asked was, about one gift and that uh, stamp duty, but you forget about the capital gains tax, you forget about the inheritance tax. 
uh, you can forget about the gift, the reservation of benefit. So there's there's quite a few things that you need to consider, and, and that's why it's, it's, it's always best to to speak to a specialist. You can speak to to Hazel. Uh, you've got her email address there, and, and uh, yeah, if, if don't I mean, look, we we do get people who have gone to say, a solicitor and uh, transferred a property from from their name to a limited company uh, for one pound, and and because for one pound there was no consideration. And therefore, or transferred, gifted a property from one person to the other for a pound, and they were assured that there would be no stamp duty. But then they didn't realise there were there was capital gains tax to pay. Uh, so you've got to be very, very careful. Next question. So it's from the same gentleman who asked about what are these? So if the house I'm selling has history of residential and part for buy to let, if I sell it, how capital gains tax will work? I mean that that's uh, uh, that's uh, the capital gains tax will if you haven't been living in the uh, uh, property, um, or if you uh, if you if you bought a house say ten years ago you lived in it for three years then you moved out you rented it out so you'll get relief uh, on it for the first three years that you lived in it and the additional the last nine months uh, but the rest will be subject to capital gains tax. And, and that's that's very important. There are some exemptions available, but the exemptions are, are reducing as as time progresses. Mm. Uh, exemption, and then new new rules are being brought in. Um, but uh, it's worthwhile having a conversation with us, and, and then we'll kind of guide you on how we uh, how how the relief is calculated and how much relief you're entitled. If there's any planning that you can do to completely uh, elim eliminate the the, the 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 tax, if possible. Right, next question. We've got to finish in three minutes. Uh, first time buyer purchasing buy to let property, do they benefit from a 3% surcharge? Well, it's not the benefit of the 3% surcharge. The 3% surcharge is a liability, it's not a benefit to anyone. Uh, um, and the answer to that is if you're a first time buyer, um, it doesn't matter what you're buying, um, if it's your only property, then you you don't have to pay the three percent surcharge. But then you'd have to, if you then go and buy a main residence, you would have to pay a three percent surcharge on that. Um, so it's it's just essentially a surcharge on paying um, on on having more than one property. So if you buy one property, you don't pay the surcharge. If you're buying two properties, then your second purchase you will pay um, the surcharge. It's only if you've got um, if you've got an overlap between your two main res between a main residence. So say you're changing a job and you have to go and buy a house somewhere else in the country. So you're going to be remote commuting. But say you did that and you haven't managed to sell your first house, then because of because they want to be um, helpful and 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 allow you to move around the country for for reasons to do with um you know just having to move your house and, and relocate your family then you have that three-year um overlap period and and the opportunity to make a refund but for everybody for any other situation if you're buying a second property you will be paying the three percent surcharge so the question is, is it your first property no surcharge is it your second property surcharge Right, somebody's asked for Hazel's email address, which I've just posted on the uh, in the room. And um, yeah, I think uh, we are done. I'll just post my email as well. If you've got any questions, we get in contact. We are here to help, as always. Right, excellent. So Hazel's email and my email are there. Yep, telephone number is 0207-1998-1834. And thank you, everybody, for your time. And hopefully we'll see you again in a month. But with our colleagues from the tax investigations team, we'll, we'll be doing another webinar in two weeks' time. Thank you. Okay then, Bye. goodbye.